Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So uh, we are into the eighth week of this course uh, on nonlinear adaptive control and we are already looking at uh, several algorithms. We've already looked at several algorithms uh, which will help us to uh, control autonomously systems such as what we see in the background of a satellite orbiting the earth. Uh, we are also now able to you know, design algorithms against uncertainties uh, in such systems. All right. So what we were uh, doing until last time is uh, basically completing the proof for model reference adaptive control. So model reference adaptive control was a paradigm uh, for adaptive control of linear systems, which is a very, very popular and very, very well known and very well cited and even used uh, sort of uh, set of methods in adaptive control. And the basic difference from what we have been doing before this uh, is that uh, here we actually track a state and that comes out of a reference model than just a reference signal yeah so the i believe the picture looked somewhat like this right so that is the big difference here that you have a reference model instead of just a reference state right and everything else is sort of similar um, in terms of the analysis the big difference that we saw was that um, we had unknowns which were actually matrices right so we started with a star and sorry a and b being unknowns and then of course we moved it to sort of redesigned it so that the unknowns became uh, these k star and l star right which were still matrices right and because we were dealing with matrices and matrix unknowns uh, we also learned a rather novel way of designing uh, Lyapunov candidate functions for matrix states or matrix unknowns, right? So here the parameter uh, error term, instead of just being a quadratic or a square of the vector norm, is in fact a kind of a matrix Frobenius norm, weighted matrix Frobenius norm, and it is defined in terms of the trace function. Yeah, so this is was the big difference. And uh, in order to sort of uh, complete the proof, we also needed to use some very, very interesting and useful trace properties, right? So this is something that I hope all of you will remember always, yeah, because these are very, very useful in manipulating um, any kind of um, Lyapunov candidates or any, in any other context, if you see trace functions, then uh, it's very, very useful to manipulate these trace functions. Um, and we can use these equalities in order to do that. All right. And of course, then we designed our update law as usual. It was still a certainty equivalence adaptation. So all was uh, as usual other than these particular features. Okay. So now we are sort of uh, uh, ready to move into the next week's lectures. Again, please do not get confused. Uh, the sort of classification of the week is also uh, in a sense to uh, provide homeworks and just to organize material uh, as and when we do complete the material uh, for a particular week we will move on to what we call next week lectures so although we are in week number eight we are already going to start looking at week nine lectures yeah so i really hope that this doesn't cause any confusion uh, should be pretty straightforward. This is just for us to, uh, you know, organize the homeworks in a proper way. Yeah. So this week nine is titled Adaptive Integrator Backstepping and Extended Matching Design. So we will uh, do a couple of things in this set of lectures. Uh, the first is we sort of generalize uh, this adaptive uh, integrator backstepping that we did 
a couple of weeks ago so not the week number eight uh, but week number seven lectures right in week number seven lectures we saw integrator backstepping for the first time we also saw how to do uh, backstepping design for the unmatched case so what we will do here is to generalize that idea okay and then we look at a different method of uh, doing adaptive integrator backstepping uh, so that we don't have to resort to over parameterization all right so that's the agenda for week nine lecture notes yeah so let's continue right so let's uh, suppose that for this system right so now suppose we are since we are generalizing so we are essentially taking vector states and all that okay so well i mean to be honest let me mark this first before we start so this is actually lecture 8.3 all right this is lecture 8.3 okay so um so we will recall is this week seven i mean i'm going to go here to week seven we had a system like this right where we learned how to do uh backstepping for unmatched uh, parameters right and we we know how we did it we started with the first system then um assume that there is an unknown parameter so the desired quantity was designed with a theta cap right and then uh, we of course had a lyapunov candidate design but then when we went to the second lyapunov function and we tried to choose a control there was a problem because the control is not implementable due to the presence of this theta here right so control contains an x2 desired dot which can which brings up a theta which is not implemented so obviously we don't want to use a theta hat again because we already have specified an update law and we can't do it it will create an error in the analysis so instead of theta hat we put in a new estimate mu hat right so we put in a new estimate mu hat for the same quantity theta we have two estimates theta hat and mu hat right and so uh, with that we declare this new variable as x2 hat x2 desired hat dot instead of x2 desired dot and then we continue this analysis with this uh, new mu hat and then of course uh, you have uh, a candidate lyapunov function which also contains a mu tilde on top of the theta tilde okay so essentially because we have two uh, parameters uh, well two estimates for the same parameter we have two terms corresponding to the parameter errors right so there are two different parameter errors all right so that essentially was what we were doing i mean we then specify mu hat dot and all that in the standard way yeah if you uh, don't remember please go back and revise what we sort of did in this lecture so what we want to do today uh, at least in the beginning is that we want to uh, look at a generalization of this when the states are not scalar states yeah because most in most problems more often than not your uh, states will be vectors yeah so it doesn't make any sense to just restrict ourselves to scalar states and uh, doing this will also give you a very fair idea that um, the analysis methods don't change significantly uh, when you have a vector state instead of a scalar state okay so it's not like uh, things become too complicated okay so that's rather nice so i this is another thing that i want all of you to get used to yeah because suppose I think of any robotic application, say a two arm manipulator, or think a, a quad rotor. Right? Quad rotor has six degrees of freedom, right? So three rotational and three translational. So uh, corresponding to that, there are 12 states because three position states, three uh, linear, translational velocity states, three angular position states, three angular velocity states. So there are 12 states. So it's vectors right so we describe the equations in terms of vector equations right similarly for a two um, joint manipulator right for a two joint manipulator so you can think of the shoulder and elbow right if i have a two joint manipulator so the shoulder has two states corresponding to the shoulder angle and the shoulder angular velocity and the elbow has two states corresponding to the elbow angle and elbow angular velocity right so therefore uh, this is um, again a vector okay so it doesn't make sense always to 
uh, look at scalar states because we might end up having vector states yeah, with more often than not more often than not yeah so 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 that is the purpose two things one we want to generalize to vector states right and of course uh, this particular method to vector states and second we also want to sort of get a feel for how to deal with vectors in Lyapunov analysis because in many cases the states are going to be vectors yeah and you will see they're not significantly different great uh, now that we have this preamble so so suppose we have this system x dot is fx which is like a drift plus fx theta which is the term containing the unknown parameter plus gx u okay now the states are in some rn the unknown is in some vector r is a vector rp so p dimensional vector state is n dimensional right and you can find the corresponding dimensions of f and f and all that and g right and the control input u is assumed to be an m dimensional vector okay so there are three different dimensions the states are n dimensional theta is p dimensional u is m dimensional okay and of course the f and small f and whatever and also g actually uh, also g yeah are assumed to be sufficiently smooth and have all the nice properties okay so that you know we can take differentials if you want and so on and so forth right so suppose um for this system there exists an adaptive controller okay that is what is an adaptive controller there are two pieces to an adaptive controller first is a control law u specification for what the actuator has to generate and this depends on x and an estimate of the state theta hat and further there is an update law for theta hat that is a theta hat dot which again depends on the state and theta hat possibly right so this is what uh, constitutes an adaptive controller two pieces right a control law u and a parameter update law theta hat great uh, so suppose that there exists such an adaptive controller for this system and a smooth v function that is a which is essentially a lyapunov function smooth v which takes the state and the parameters it's radially unbounded in x and theta tilde right such that if i take v dot right, so what is this this quantity is just this quantity is just v dot okay this quantity is just v dot right just taking because v is a function of x and theta tilde so first i take partial with respect to x then i multiply it with x dot right because x dot now contains the control this gets substituted here so this is the closed loop system this gets substituted here so del v del x fx plus capital fx theta plus gx alpha okay so this is del v del x x dot plus del v del theta tilde theta tilde dot okay all right so uh, let's see we have to be careful here uh, we have to define uh, let's see huh. let me see if we have done this correctly okay uh, i think i think this is this should be uh actually this should be theta tilde dot okay this is not theta hat dot but a theta tilde dot it doesn't matter because i mean we usually are defining uh, theta tilde using theta hat so theta tilde is defined as theta minus theta hat typically so theta tilde dot is equal to minus theta hat dot yeah, because theta is assumed to be a constant right so basically this doesn't change anything i mean if you i mean it just changed the sign but that's important because that's the sign used here right so this is theta tilde dot not theta hat dot so it's a derivative of the parameter error but remember the right side cannot depend on theta tilde because theta tilde is unknown we keep that in mind but then this theta hat tilde dot is just minus theta hat dot so if you know theta tilde dot you know minus theta hat dot also okay great so so this is just the derivative of v 
along the closed loop trajectories, right? So v is a function of x and theta tilde, so partial of v with respect to x times x dot and partial of v with respect to theta tilde times theta tilde dot, right? And the assumption is that for this for this particular v, v dot along the system trajectories is less than or equal to minus wx theta tilde, which is a uh, negative semi-definite function. Yeah, so minus of w is negative semi-definite. Okay, so this is the assumption, right? So this is the assumption, right? We start with this kind of a system, right? And we have an adaptive controller and a corresponding v. Yeah, and a corresponding v such that v dot turns out to be less than or equal to a negative definite function. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, then we go on to add an integrator. But before we do that, I wanted to compare this with our, uh, sorry, our system here. Now, if you look at this guy, the first piece, right, where you have this system, just look at this. Just look at this system. And if you think of x2 as the control, just like we did in backstepping, if you think of x2 as the control, right, then you do have this control law, which contains the theta hat and an update law, right, with a corresponding v such that v dot is negative semi definite. All right, so we exactly have this, right? So what's the situation then? We, uh, our first system was, is of the form this, in fact, I have written it here, right? Where this is actually the control and this is the control law, right? Which is a function of X and uh, one and theta hat. And of course, there's an update law, which is theta hat dot. There is a V function, which is this. And V dot equals or less than equals minus W. Could also depend on theta hat, but the point is it is negative semi-definite. Yeah. The key point to remember is that it's negative semi So we exactly have the same setup already available for the scalar state case, scalar state, scalar control case. So we are exactly generalizing that setup. Okay. We are exactly generalizing that particular setup. So we assume that we have now a vector system. We have an adaptive controller for this vector system such that uh, there also exists a smooth V such that V dot is negative semi definite okay so now if we add an integrator which is essentially what's been done here right if you look at this we think of this as the control but actually you have an additional state x2 dot is u essentially we have an integrator so that's what we say now if we add an integrator so the control here so the structure here is slightly more general of course but still we do the same thing if we add an integrator that is the control is replaced by this psi and then the psi dot is u. Okay, so the, the control is at the next level. Okay, then what do we do? All right, so this is where the integrator backstepping was used earlier and we want to, of course, generalize it to this vector case. Right? So one thing should be evident that uh, this psi is also an RM. It has to be the same dimension as the control, right? Because otherwise this is not a feasible situation. Okay, so if psi is a different dimension, then there can be problems. So we assume that psi is the same dimension as the control. Okay, so then the claim is that we can still construct a Lyapunov function, which allows us to compute an adaptive controller, which is going to guarantee closed loop signals remain bounded, and also that uh, somehow the backstepping error and w go to zero, st goes to infinity. Because this is the best we can do anyway, right? Even in the scalar case. Uh, we prove that w goes to 0. Right? What was w? In this case, w is this. So we prove x1 goes to 0. Right? That's the best we can do. Right? And of course, we also prove that the backstepping error goes to 0. So we prove these two things. That's what we want. Okay, even in this scalar case. So that's what we claim here also. We want to claim here at least. Right? 
that this w goes to zero and the backstepping error which is psi minus the because the psi is the state now and cannot always be made exactly equal to alpha but in steady state it can be so psi has to follow alpha and that is the backstepping error and that is also going to be driven to be zero okay so what is this magical lyapunov function nothing very magical to be honest all right so we call this v bar now and it has several states it has x and psi which are now the new states it has it has the earlier parameter error theta tilde and it has the new parameter error new parameter theta bar okay remember there we used a mu right here of course we used a mu right uh, let's see yeah here we used a mu okay the mu hat so here we are using theta bar okay just a difference in notation all right so so it's a function of four quantities now x which was always there theta tilde which was already there for the one state system and now we have psi and theta bar corresponding to the integrator and the new over parameterization okay how do we construct it take the same v which was just a function of x and theta hat then uh, we add a backstepping error term standard then we add a term corresponding to the new parameter error okay the theta bar is a new parameter estimate so i just add a term corresponding to that now notice that because uh, this is a vector i have taken care that this is written as a norm okay so this is written as a norm this is no longer uh, this square of psi minus alpha it is in fact norm squared of psi minus alpha and it is very standard to use the euclidean norm or the two norms so this is denoted as z of course like is mentioned here right so this term is actually one half z transpose z and yeah, this is the euclidean norm squared yeah and similarly i construct a very similar looking term for the theta minus theta bar that is a new parameter error also just that i add a adaptation gain right? i always add an adaptation gain this is the adaptation gain okay so let me see unfortunately we have used the same gamma here okay this is not the same okay let's be clear on that this is like a let me call it an s inverse okay so s is uh, some constant positive definite matrix so this is not the same as that gamma okay that gamma was the this gamma is actually the update law for the parameter theta hat okay this is the different parameter different matrix s and this s is simply like you all know is the adaptation gain it actually controls how fast or slow your adaptation with that okay all right great so now that we have this sort of a new uh, kind of lyapunov function for this integrator system with vector states right so therefore we have norms appearing here we have transposes appearing here all right uh, we are going to of course take the derivative right i mean the, our claim is that this is a good lyapunov function okay this is our claim now of course we want to verify this claim right so uh, let's see okay let's see so the dynamics uh, first we want to do the first thing we want to do is write the dynamics in the new variables which is x and z now right because we introduced a backstepping variable right it's not x and psi but it's a x and z okay so we just do that so if you first so x dot is fx plus fx theta plus gx times a u right and u can be written as what i'm sorry this is not u this is in fact uh i'm, not, I'm sorry this is my bad this is not u but this is psi right so this is what is the dynamics right so and psi can be written as z plus alpha that's what i do okay and what is z dot 
z dot is just the derivative of this which is psi dot which is u and then minus alpha dot so then i have minus of alpha dot so all of this is minus of alpha dot okay alpha is a function of two variables x and theta hat so first i take the derivative with respect to x okay so del alpha del x times an x dot and x dot is just plugged from here okay so this guy is right here okay and then minus del alpha del theta hat times theta hat dot okay yeah times theta hat dot so what is theta hat dot so this is where we have to be careful right so this is actually now let me be careful here this term should be minus del alpha del theta hat theta hat dot remember alpha cannot depend on theta tilde right because it's was the first stage control can depend only on theta hat because theta tilde is unknown okay so and remember from the previous derivation theta hat dot is actually equal to minus theta tilde dot so it is equal to minus gamma okay minus gamma so i have to be careful it's actually going to be equal to plus del alpha del theta hat gamma x theta hat so that's a plus sign and not a minus sign so i need to be careful here this is actually going to be a plus sign okay this is actually going to be a plus sign okay i hope that is clear so what have i done i have simply written the dynamics it's just a lot of bookkeeping again all right i have simply written the dynamics in terms of the new variables x and z this is exactly what i was doing for the scalar case also all i'm doing here is being a little bit more uh, careful because i have vectors that are involved and that's it okay so here i have x dot which was fx plus cap fx theta plus gx times psi and psi is just replaced in terms of the backstepping error variable as z plus alpha okay uh, then i have z dot which is psi dot minus alpha dot yeah so the, when i say dot it is a derivative with respect to time and right? so i take psi dot which is u and minus alpha dot so there are two terms del alpha del x minus del alpha del x x dot minus del alpha del theta hat theta hat dot so there are two terms and then the first term is therefore del alpha del x and x dot which is substituted from here and then i have del alpha del theta hat theta hat dot which brings in a negative gamma so this becomes a positive so i have fixed this sign so when i write it in this form again remember that what's the dimension of z so it's important that we remember all this so z um, so x is in so x dot belongs to, oh well i'll write it here so z x is in rn of course so i don't need to write it but z is the same dimension as the control so it is in rn right so this is rn now what is the dimension of this quantity this is rn okay so if i look at thing in the bracket this is simply x dot so this is equal to x dot and this of course belongs to rn okay i need to be careful here now so what is the dimension of del alpha del x therefore what does what has to be the dimension of del alpha del x it has to be uh let's see i'm going to has to be r m cross n okay to be consistent with this expression right because the right hand side has to be r m and this is in rn therefore this has to be an m cross n matrix okay now how does this happen similarly similarly before we go on uh, gamma here 
is from theta tilde dot or theta hat dot whatever and theta was in rp right rp there are p unknown parameters therefore this guy yeah has to belong to r m cross p okay so how does this happen so look at what is alpha alpha is a function of x and theta hat okay what do i know about dimension of alpha i know that alpha if i may write it carefully alpha is in fact a map from x states so rn and p states which is rp so that is theta hat states to what it is the same dimension as psi so it is m rm okay so now if i take partial of alpha with respect to only these states it's obvious that it will give i get a m by n matrix okay when i take partial of an m vector with respect to only n of the states i'll get an m by n matrix similarly if i take the partial of an m vector with respect to p states then i'll get an m by p matrix so this is all consistent okay so just keep this in mind that all these partials are are now jacobians what we call jacobians and they are all matrices all right excellent so what is it that we did today we sort of started to generalize the uh, adaptive integrator backstepping that we looked in looked at in week number 7 to the vector case and um, we are sort of trying to understand the differences when there is the vector case so the norms appear the transposes appear and then there's the jacobian and all these notions so we have to do very careful bookkeeping but as of now i hope you've seen that the methods are not in distinctly different just because the states become vectors or something like that all right so of course we'll continue working on this generalization of adaptive integrator backstepping to the vector case uh, in the subsequent session also all right all right great so this is where we stop i'll see you again next time thanks Thank you.